Hi everyone! Welcome to the Jada and Stitches show, and welcome to what is probably the prettiest and most intricate looking granny square that I have designed to date. I am in love with this. <laughs> it is not nearly as complicated as it looks. Hear me out. This is a 12 inch granny square, so it's fantastic for building blankets or bags or other big projects, but you can technically make it bigger than this or smaller than this. It's a composite. It's built out of 25 mini granny squares. I did the join as you go method, so there's not even any sewing to do. And I used a very specific color palette, which I will talk about a little bit more in the tutorial. But you can make this as garden variety random as you want. The unifying effect is this border we put on, a simple row of that classic granny shell stitch. And I recommend using a color in the border that you find somewhere in the body of the square. Kind of brings the whole square together. And if you're making a whole bunch of these to put into a blanket, if you edge them all in the same color, it will unify the entire blanket. So it won't look as scrappy or random as it might seem up front. Each of these little mini granny squares are tiny. They are two inches tall. They consist of two rows, a center and then a squaring up in row two. So you could technically make up a ton of the dots in the middle. And then when you're ready to start putting the whole thing together, grab a dot, grab another piece of yarn and square it up, join it to the next square. Again, I'll explain all of this in the tutorial, but this is the ultimate scrap busting square. There's about a yard in the center, maybe two more yards outside, three yards total for this tiny little square, but you get enough of them together and you get something like this. I'm using a size three lightweight yarn for today's project and it worked out to be a 12 inch block, but it's a granny square. So technically you can use any weight category yarn you like and any hook size you like, so long as it matches and it goes with your own personal stitch tension. But keeping in mind, if this is 12 inches using a size three lightweight category yarn and a four millimeter hook, if you use a heavier weight category and a bigger hook, it will be larger. If you use a slighter weight category and a smaller hook, it'll be smaller. You can also play with the number of join as you go minis inside the overall square. You could make an entire baby blanket doing join as you go minis and adding that border at the end. The opportunities to play with this are endless. And of course, color, fiber, the sky's the limit. Anyway, I can't wait to share this with you. Let's grab our hooks, we'll grab our yarn, we'll head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up this fantastic granny square together. <laughs> For today's granny square, I'm using a size three lightweight, also known as DK weight, sport weight, or baby weight yarn, so a lighter weight yarn than I normally do, in 100% acrylic. I've got a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and I'm using a G6, also known as a four millimeter hook, but you can use whatever hook is comfortable with the weight of yarn you're using. This is a scrap project. If you're going to make a baby blanket, I recommend about 450 yards in total yardage for the entire project. Each of these mini squares takes between three and five yards each, depending on the weight of the yarn, your personal tension, and the hook size you're using. So a full 25 mini square, full-sized granny square will take between oh, 100 and 125 yards total. But if you're making a baby blanket and you want to make it all bright, cheerful candy colors like I'm doing, having five or six skeins of yarn that are roughly 100 yards each should be more than enough to make a decent sized baby blanket. But I always recommend having a little extra just in case. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. Each square is made in two parts. There's the center and then there's the squaring up of the center. You can make it all one color or you can make it in two colors like a real scrap blanket like I'm going to. We're going to start with a slip knot and we're going to chain four. If four is too small or too short a length for you, you can chain five or six. What you want is to create a very small ring by slip stitching into that first chain, you want to make a very small ring to work into. So four chains works well for me. 
We're going to chain three. The chain three at the beginning of each row counts as a double crochet. To finish row one, we are going to work 11 double crochet into that little ring. So no chains. Row one is basically a circle of double crochets. Because the chain three counts as a double crochet, the chain three plus 11 regular double crochets will equal 12, and that's what you want to have at the end of row one. Once you have 12 stitches, so 11 double crochets plus your chain three, that equals 12, you're going to find the top of the chain three and join with a slip stitch. Your middle might want to bow in and bow out, it's okay. What you want is a nice round circle. You're going to fasten off if you're changing colors. If you're not changing colors, don't fasten off, just chain three and then wait for the rest of us to catch up. For those of us who are changing colors, grab your next color now. I've got my second color. I'm going to start with a slip knot on my hook. I'm going to join in the same place that I fastened off, so right in the top of that chain three. And I'm going to chain three after I slip stitch to join. So slip stitch to join and then chain three. And then we're all at the same place. So if you didn't change colors, you just chain three. If you did change colors, you join with a slip stitch and chain three. That is the first what counts as a double crochet. We're going to work two more double crochet stitches into the same place. So that's three. Chain two. So we chain two for corners and into the same place you're going to work three more double crochet. So chain three, two double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, all worked into the same stitch. So nice and tight, all of it in the same place. We are not chaining. We are going to skip two stitches. So it might be easier for you to look at the actual double crochet. Here's the chain three, and that's what we worked into the top of. You're going to skip the next two stitches, find the third, and work three double crochet. two chains, and three double crochet. So three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, into the same stitch. And there you go, you've got two corners already. Skip the next two stitches, find the third, and repeat. Three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, all into the same stitch. We're not chaining, we're skipping the next two stitches, finding the third and repeating once more. Three double crochet, chain two for the corner, three more double crochet, and then you'll skip two more stitches. There they are there. There's the chain three that we started in. You're gonna find the top of the chain three that began this row. Nice and easy to see in that new color. Join with a slip stitch to the top of it, and that is your first little granny square all done. You can fasten off and take a moment to weave in your tails or you can weave in all your tails at the end of the project. But I find that weaving in my tails as I go makes the project end faster. <laughs> so if I'm on a mission to make a blanket and get it done, I like to weave my tails in as I go. Once you've finished your first square, that's it. That's the only square that's going to be done completely on its own and not attached to anything. So every square from here on out gets joined 
as we go. For the first row, you'll be joining all of your squares along one side only. I'm right-handed, I find it easiest to work off the right side of my squares. If you're a lefty, you might find it easy or more comfortable to work off the left side, but it really doesn't matter. It's whatever you find comfortable, but your first row is always going to be getting joined along a single side. You might also find it really handy to whip up a whole bunch of centers. So these take about and a yard, maybe a yard and a half, about a meter of yarn, very little. So if you've got a lot of short scraps lying around, you might want to make up a whole bunch of these 12 double crochet centers. Remember, that one of those double crochets is the chain three. So a very simple little center. Have a whole bunch of them lying around, and when you're ready to add another square, you can just grab a center, grab your sort of squaring up color, and continue. And that's exactly what I'm going to do right now. I'm going to start with a slip knot on my hook. I'm going to grab a center. I'm going to join really anywhere. You can join in any stitch you want. It doesn't have to be where you fastened off, uh, but you can use that space too. But if you've got a whole bunch of pre-made centers lying around, don't worry about where you join your yarn. Just sort of grab a center and start crocheting. So I've joined with a slip stitch. I'm going to chain three to begin. Now all of the squares in the first row, like I said, are only joined along one side, so we only have to concern ourselves with the joins along one side. And there are three joins per side in these little squares. This corner, the middle space, and the bottom corner, or wherever you might be working. It's basically a corner, a middle space, and a corner. I like to join as I'm finishing my square so that I've got less time being attached to the blanket. So I try to do the majority of my crochet that doesn't need to be attached before I worry about attaching. So in that case, I'm going to work on my first corner, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet, all into the same space. And then I'm going to work the second corner the same way. Skip two stitches, three double crochet, chain two, three double crochet. So that's two full corners created. And now it's that third corner that I need to start thinking about joining. So I skip two stitches, find the next stitch, start my next or third corner. So I work the first three double crochet I chain one to begin the corner, and here's where I join. So I pick up my square, I'm gonna be joining here, here, and here. So I'm gonna insert my hook into that corner. I'm going to slip stitch, but not very tightly. Then I'm gonna finish the corner. My second chain, and then three more double crochet all worked into this space, same space. You might find it helpful to work on a flat table or a flat surface just so your first square doesn't dance around on you too much. So here's my attach. Let me get my hook out of the way. I've now finished this corner and I've attached it at the adjacent corner on the other square. The next place I want to attach is right here. So I've finished my three double crochet. I'm not chaining in between shells along the sides, but before I jump into my fourth corner, I'm just going to slip my hook through that middle space, slip stitch, not tightly, and then I will skip two stitches, one, two, find the third, and begin my fourth corner right into this stitch here. So three double crochet, chain the first of those two chains, remembering that I have to join three, like there's three joins on every side. So there's the top corner, the middle section, and the bottom corner. So I've finished my first shell of my fourth corner. I've chained one to start into the corner before I finish. I'm going to slip stitch into that last corner, then chain my second chain of the corner, and finish that corner with the three double crochet or the final shell. So chain three, or I should say three double crochet, chain one, join, chain one, three double crochet, 
all worked into the same place, but I will say that out loud again in a second. You're now finished, and just like the previous square, you find the top of the chain three that began the row, slip stitch to join, and fasten off. Okay, let's do a quick recap. It's helpful to have a bunch of pre-made centers. When you're ready to join, and we're working on this first row, remember that Along the first row, there's only a single side along squares that is joined, which means there are three join sections. So I started, worked the first corner, the second corner, began the third corner, three double crochet, chain one, and now I need to join. So I slip stitched into the top corner of the square, continued with chain one, three double crochet, into the same place. Before I started on my last corner, remembering there's a space between shells here, I wanted to join there too, so I slip stitched. Then I skipped these two stitches, three double crochet, chain one, final join, slip stitch in the bottom corner, chain one, three double crochet, all into the same place. Just like that, and now it's joined. Your little edges are going to sort of pop up but that is not um, something to worry about. This is actually part of that overall design. And it's nice to have it join as you go because um, it just saves you having to stick them all together at the end. Uh, so this really is a fun way to do a scrap scrappy quilt. I'm gonna join a few more squares and then we're gonna get into the second row and we'll see how that goes. I've already joined five of my mini granny squares together and I'm making large granny squares that are five minis by five minis. So there will be 25 minis in each of my overall final sized granny squares. Now I'm going to join my next block to the bottom. So I worked from left to right, joining on the right side of each block. And remember there are only three positions where you join. So you start that third corner, chain one, slip stitch, chain one, three double crochet, slip stitch into the middle, and then three double crochet, chain one, slip stitch, chain one, three double crochet into the same space. So that's how we were doing that first row. Now I've got my next square to join at the beginning of my second row. I'm gonna join it to the bottom of my first ever square. So I'm gonna just work kind of like a typewriter going down. Now you can also work going up, going the other way. It doesn't really matter. And if you suddenly decide midway through joining your squares together that you want a different color somewhere, you can do that. It really isn't um, steadfast where you have to work from. You can go from left to right on one row, from right to left on another. It's entirely up to you and whatever's comfortable. I'm going to be joining now across the bottom. So again, there's three points of join along each side. I've completed the first two full corners and half of the third corner of my next square. So I'm going to join down here. I've chained, I've done my three double crochet chain one, so I'm slip stitching into the corner for the first join, chain one, and I'm going to finish the three double crochet. Before I move on to the next corner, I'm going to make sure nothing's twisted on me. I'm going to join in that middle section. So that's my second join, a slip stitch. Then I can skip two stitches and three double crochet into the third stitch. Chain one to begin the corner. There's my final point of join, it's that corner space. Slip stitch, chain one, and finish the three double crochet in that same stitch. And then I join with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three that began the row of that square. Now I've also been taking the opportunity to weave in my tails as I go. You can leave them all out and weave them in at the end if you want, but I like weaving in my tails as I go because I feel like it helps kind of keep the neatness and orderly going, order, orderliness going on my square as I work. Now I've chosen to make all of my mini squares the same. So every square with a yellow center has a pink outer um, square. Every square with a purple center is finished with green and so on. And now I'm going to work sort of this constant repeating pattern. I have five squares, mini squares to do. I have five colors and uh, five different colors and each 
square is a different combination of colors. And then I'm going to repeat them in this order. So this one started with the pink square and then yellow, etc. Next row I'm going to start with the green square and then the orange one, the yellow one, and the purple one, finishing with the pink. The next row, row three, will start with this orange square and then the yellow, the purple, the pink, the green, and so on. And that way I'm going to get a really neat diagonal effect going. But that's just my choice. If this is a full-on scrap project for you, uh, the more random sometimes the better. Remember that if you're making the giant granny square like I am, the 12 inch granny, you'll be putting a little border on it and that border will unify the entire project. All right, I've got to start one more square and then we're going to join the second one and I'll show you how you join along two sides as opposed to just one. I've started my next square for the next placement in row two of my big granny square here. I've completed the first corner, so I joined my yarn, chain three, two more double crochet, chain two, three double crochet in the same place. And now I'm going to skip two stitches and start the second corner. But because I'm now joining along two sides as opposed to just one, I'm only going to start the second corner before I start joining. So that second, um, along my first full row, I've got one full corner, I've jumped in, started with my next shell, I've chained one and now I'm going to start joining. So the first place I'm going to join is the bottom corner here of my second square from row one. So I'm going to slip my hook through there and join with a slip stitch, chain one and complete that corner with three double crochet. If you have trouble keeping track and you find yourself kind of having to go back and because you keep forgetting to join where you're supposed to join, it might be helpful to mark all of the spots that you need to join per square with a stitch marker. So as you get to it, you remember, ah yes, I have to pause and join at this point. Um, it's just sometimes helpful to have a little extra reminder as you go, because it is easy to get lost in those double crochets. Before I move on and skip two stitches and start the next corner, I want to join in that middle stitch, so the middle space, I should say, along that top square. Then I can skip two stitches and here they are here. Start into my third corner which is three double crochet. Remember if you get lost you just stop, put the whole thing down, make sure it's facing upright and that will help remind you where you are. Chain one to start the corner and here is my join. So I've got a corner here and I also have a corner over here and I want to make sure that they're all joined together. So this is what I like to do in a corner. I'm going to place my hook through the first corner, which is this guy, and slip stitch. Then I'm going to pivot to the next corner, which is the square adjacent, so next door to me, and slip stitch immediately into that corner. So I put my hook through it, and I'm going to slip stitch here and now I've joined very neatly in both corners and then I will continue with the actual corner on my new square. So chain one, that completes my little corner and then I just ignore the rest of the blanket and I go back to crocheting over here. Three more double crochet into that stitch. That completes the third corner on my brand new square. Now, before I go, I am now joining all the way down a second side. So I've finished this shell, that means I have to join in this space here. So hook goes through, get my yarn on the, on the right side, hook goes through that space, then I slip stitch, then I go back to my square, I skip two stitches, find the third one, and start my last corner, three double crochet, chain one and don't forget to join in that final corner right here. Oops, I want to make sure my yarn's over here. Slip stitch to join, chain one, and then forget the rest of the blanket, come back to the square I'm working on, three more double crochet into that same stitch, 
And that is it for the square. I'm going to slip stitch to join to the top of the first chain three that began the whole little square. Working all these different colors does help keep track of where you are because it's very obvious where you're supposed to be joining, what square you're working into. So if you're new to join as you go, using lots of different colors can be very helpful. And there we go. Square number two has been joined. If you feel like things are a bit bumpy or puckery, don't worry about it, that's what blocking is for. So it's better to err on the side of having kind of a tighter join, not too tight, but a join that makes things look like they're kind of bumping up against each other because the weight of the square or the overall blanket when you're finished will start to pull on those pressure points and the whole thing will just sort of smooth out. If it's really tight, you can block it. Blocking in, you can either be done by getting it wet, like washing it, and then flattening it out, pinning it into place on a towel and letting it dry, or using a steam iron or a steamer just to give it a little bit of steam, again, on a towel, pat it into place, pin it into place if necessary, and that will help just ease out those stitches. We do have some helpful tutorials on blocking, and we'll link them down below if you're new to that too. Then all you're going to do is continue to add a square at a time. I've got the rest of this row to do, so I'm going to be joining along this row or edge and this row edge, or I should say the side of that square, bottom of this one and the side of this one. I start, I finish my first full corner, I begin my second corner, three double crochet, chain one, and then I have to start joining. I join here, here, and here. Also in this corner, before I continue with my third corner of the little square I'm doing, I join here and I join here and then I finish. So now you're joining along two sides as opposed to just one. If you feel it's helpful, mark out the places you need to join with a stitch marker and that will help keep track for you if you're getting lost in the little double crochets. I have now attached all 25 of my squares, remembering that this was the first one, it's made on its own. The rest of the squares in the first row, numbers two, three, four, and five, are all attached along one side. So they've got three joins per square. Once you get into the second, third, fourth, and fifth rows, or beyond, depending on how big you make your squares, or if you're making an entire blanket, the first square of each row is only attached along one side. It has three joins, but every other square has six joins. So you've got two sides to join it on. Remembering that you're joining in the corners, so you're always going slip stitch corner, slip stitch corner, then chain one before you continue. And it looks absolutely adorable on its own, but we're going to add a border and turn it into a complete granny square. So now is the time that you want to pick a color that you feel will really make your granny square stand out. Maybe your border will blend in. It's an opportunity to make everything sort of uniform, especially if you're making a crazy scrappy granny. Now I've got this lovely purple that's running right through the middle of my square, so that's the color I'm going to use for my border. I'm going to take my border color, make a slip knot on my hook, and I'm going to join my yarn with a slip stitch and chain three. Alternatively, you could use a standing double crochet stitch if you wanted. I'm going to join in the top right corner. If you're left-handed, you might want to join in the top left corner, uh, but I do often recommend joining your yarn and starting in a corner because corners are kind of easy to identify. Chain three, two more double crochet to complete your first shell. Chain two, and three more double crochet all into that same corner space to complete the first corner of the border. And now the magic of chains begins. So unlike our little mini squares where we did not chain one in between our shells as we worked along the straight, we are going to use a chain one in between our shells for the border and I'll explain why in a minute. So chain one before you leave the corner. The next space we're working into is this one right here. Three double crochet into it. Very typical feeling granny square pattern. So three double crochet equals a shell. Chain one and we come to a seam. You have a corner space for your first mini square, a seam stitch, and a corner space for your adjacent mini square. 
Instead of putting a shell in each of these two spaces, because they're too close together, we're going to put a shell into the actual join stitch. And the reason that we're working the extra chain in between our shells in our border row is what is going to give us just enough of a breathing room so that when we work a shell, three double crochet in this case, worked right into that join stitch, and then a chain one, and we skip over to the next space, which is this space here in between shells of the next stitch. Oops. Three double crochet equals one shell. Chain one before you leave. That little chain one is giving us just enough of a bit of a, um, a breather or a stretch so that we'll have a nice even edge all the way along and that little join with the two spaces won't feel cramped or it won't feel too wide because we were trying to work two extra shells into those spaces. So we're going to use the chain one in between the shells all the way along the sides just to give us some breathing room. And it works like a charm. When you get to the next seam, you're not using the corner spaces, you're looking for the seam stitch. You're working three double crochet right into the seam. I like to use the actual stitch. Three double crochet. Remember to chain one, that's giving us our breathing room. As we leave, you're skipping the corner spaces, now you're just looking for those middle spaces of the mini squares all the way along each side. Here's the border along the first edge of our square. You can see that those chain ones in between our shells give it just enough of a breather that it doesn't crunch our square together and it doesn't make our square fan out. So it's just the right amount of stitchery. When you get to the corner, you make sure you work your last shell, chain one, and into the corner space, it's three double crochet or a shell, chain two for the corner, and three double crochet. Shell, chain two, shell. That's your corner. Then you're going to chain one and you're going to continue. A shell or three double crochet into the space in the middle of each mini square. When you get to a seam, it's the seam stitch you're working the shell into, chain one, and then shell, chain one, shell, chain one, shell, chain one, shell, chain one, all the way down the side, shell, chain two, shell, chain one in the corners. That's all you've got to remember to do and I'll catch up with you at the beginning again. When you get all the way back to the beginning, your last shell or three double crochet will be worked into the middle space of that first square you started on. Don't forget to chain one and then you're joining with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three or that standing double crochet that you began the row with. That is it. You can snip your yarn. Fasten off, take a moment to weave in your ends and make sure that all of your little ends are woven in. So I'm looking in the back here and this is where most of my little ends wind up. So I'm gonna make sure that I get all those little ends woven in And that is the granny square made. Now, of course, if you were making an entire blanket with the join as you go minis, then you could still use this particular pattern uh, border once you were finished the entire blanket. It doesn't matter if the blanket is a rectangle or a square, how big the square or rectangle is, because that same granny shell stitch pattern will work over top of any number of those little minis joined together. I don't know about you, but I'm in love. I love this square. I love making the minis. I love playing with the colors. I love the layout. I love join as you go. I love that you can play with the yarn weight, the hook size, the yarn fiber. I like that you can change the number of squares inside the blog. 
I like that you can add more rows of that border if you wanted. You could have a nice wide border on this square. You could change the colors of the border if you wanted. You could join a whole bunch of these squares together and then add the border so you have a complete blanket. The sky is the limit with this project. And I hope you enjoyed making it as much as I did. And that is that. We will see you soon here on the Jada and Stitches show. Until then, stay safe, stay scrappy, <laughs> and have a great week. Bye, guys. Hi, everybody. Mr. and Stitches here. Thank you for watching today. Here are some of our other videos you might be interested in. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe.